Hello, hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of How to Play Survival with Me, Throlash. And today, as you can see by the obsidian in my hand, we are going to the nether. Finally, we're going to go to the nether. We're going to see what's in there for us, what we can get from there, why are we going to the nether, etc., etc. So strap in, folks, and get ready. That's right, everybody, it is finally time for us to go to the nether. Now, I've done a little bit of work on the camp as well. I covered up this hole here. Uh, I'm thinking about making a little access place for it maybe under our home igloo because that's where I'm getting a lot of my cobblestone. Um, and I also made this. Uh, I made another igloo for us, and this igloo is going to house our nether portal. As you can see, I've got a little space for it already, which is going to be super great. And I've also started to put lanterns down. Now, lanterns are made super easy with some iron ingots and a torch. I'll grab a couple of ingots here. We have a torch in my pockets, and as you can see... Uh, eight ingots around a torch in the center it gets us a lantern. Now, lanterns can be placed on the floor. They can be placed hanging uh, up on something. They can hang on chains. We'll get to chains later. And I believe in the newest update, lanterns can now be put underwater, which is pretty cool. So, the nether is excruciatingly dangerous. Uh, it, it's probably one of the scariest places in this game to be honest with you um there is lava all over the place you can't actually sleep or else your bed will explode in your face um you can't place water down so if you catch on fire you kind of have just have to wait it out until you're no longer on fire the nether is full of mobs that want to do nothing but kill you it's it's an awful, awful place, so why bother going <laughs> It's really the question here. Well, there are some things that we can only get from the nether, right? Uh, Netherrack we can get out in the overworld. Uh, it's around the ruined portals that we've seen around, but there's some things that we can only get in the nether. Things like nether wart, which we can use for in, uh, uh, potion brewing. Uh, blaze rods, which again we need for potion brewing, and also to progress to the end of the game, the dragon, uh, quote unquote, the end of the game. Um, blackstone, you can get blackstone in the nether, it's a different type of stone. Uh, nether wood, there's two different types of nether wood, they're actually fungus, but they make planks and all that sort of stuff, so it's kind of wood. <laughs> uh, wither skeletons, uh, nether fortresses, etc., etc. It, it, there's a lot going on in there, and we need some of it in order to progress to, quote unquote, the end, which is a whole nother dimension. We fight the dragon where we can get our wings, etc, etc. So you remember how I said that the nether was dangerous? Well, there are some things that we need before we go into the nether, and I'll show you my pockets and what I'm talking about. We're going to need a lot of blocks that you can't find in the nether. Things like cobblestone, they stick out a lot uh, when we get in there. We'll need a lot of torches, um, a lot of food. As you can see, I have almost two stacks of food here. I I'm I probably should make some more, but I think we'll be okay for this trip. Um, I probably don't need all of these very expensive tools, but I'm going to bring them with me. Uh, a boat is usually fantastic to bring into the nether, and also some gold. Now, gold is absolutely fantastic to have on you in the nether, both physically on you in the form of armor, as well as some gold ingots, some gold items. Um, you probably don't have to bring gold with you the first time you go, but it's a good idea to have it with you. And the reason is there are some mobs in there called piglins, not these guys behind me. They're pig people. And uh, pig people only like you and won't attack you if you're wearing gold. I cannot stress enough that you wear gold in the nether for the first time you go in there. It is super important. These piglins are ruthless. They will kill you on sight. You need to wear gold. Now, why do we bring gold with us? Well, piglins uh, use a different type of trading than villagers do. Uh, piglins do what's known as bartering. So if you find a piglin, you can walk up to them and throw a piece of gold on the ground. They'll come over to it. They'll pick it up. They'll look at it and go, oh, that's really nice. And then they'll throw you something back. It's not going to be gold, but it could be super useful. Uh, the other thing you can do is actually walk up to them and just right click on them with gold in your hand. And they will take the gold out of your hand and they will start trading with you. Uh, looks like it's almost nighttime. Let's go take a sip. So as we're standing here just waiting for this gold to cook up, there are five new biomes in the nether, and those are uh, the nether wastes, soul sand valleys, warped forest, crimson forest, 
and basalt deltas. Now, nether wastes are kind of like the basic nether. It's the nether before they changed the whole thing. Uh, crimson forests are where you'll find the most amount of piglins and also hoglins. Hoglins are like super buff pigs that have tusks and will kill you in seconds. Uh, basalt deltas are full of this stuff called basalt and lava pools all over the place and magma creams and it's super dangerous. Um, soul sand valleys spawn nothing but skeletons and these giant floating ghost cat things called ghasts. And then warped forests are actually super duper peaceful. They're nice and blue. They look absolutely beautiful. And the only thing that spawns in there are endermen. Now I am terrible at killing endermen, but as it turns out... <laughs> Enderman, uh, the, the, the warp forest is, is probably one of the most safe places you can find in the nether. Uh, one of the things that I'm really hoping that we don't spawn into is a crimson forest, a basalt delta, or a soul sand valley. That would be the most dangerous thing to spawn into. But while we're still waiting on that gold, I'll show you how to make your first nether portal. Now, what you're going to want to do is put four pieces of, city, of obsidian in a line on the floor, okay? You're going to want to go three up, one, two, and three. I'm sorry, four up, four up, cheapers. One, two, three, and four. Oh, goodness, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> and then fill in that gap of two over at the top, and we should have this rectangle of obsidian. Now, you don't actually need to put obsidian in the corners, uh, any of the corners. You can do this whole thing with 10 obsidian. I just like to make full nether portals. It's a it's a thing. I actually like to make it so it's three by three in the center, but we don't have to go over that right now. Now, to light it, all you have to do is take a flint and steel, and there's your portal. Now, if we just walk into this, it's not going to suck us into the nether. We need to actually stand inside the portal itself. But there's a couple more things I want to go over before we get in there. And that would be the rest of the things that you should really bring with you. Um, the bucket of water isn't really going to help because you can't place water in the nether. It's actually right when you place it, it'll fizz up, uh, fizzle up and dry up. Um, a boat. Boats are super handy. Uh, you can't put things like hoglins in boats, but you can put piglins and endermen in there. Uh, and they'll help you survive. A spyglass is usually pretty good because the nether is vast. It's a big cavernous place. So instead of a sky, you have a, just a... A bunch of blocks on top of you and then the most important thing a flint and steel you should always 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 bring a flint and steel into the nether with you because there are ways that your nether portal can break when you get to the other side of the nether when you actually get into the nether and if that portal breaks while you're in the nether you have to find a way to get back uh, it, get back into the overworld by finding something that can light this portal. You need stuff like fire charges or or you need to like place blocks down next to your portal, have them catch on fire, and then hope that it spreads into your port. It's really a pain. So please, always, always, always take it from me who has done this to myself all the time. Please bring a flint and steel with you into the nether. Well, that is enough faffing about. I want to go and check out this nether here. I've been dreaming about this for a while. I am going to walk into this portal, sword in hand, gold boots on, raise my shield, and see where we end up in the nether. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. And it looks like we are in a nether waste, and that's actually perfect. Welcome to the nether, ladies and ho 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 Boy. That is called a bastion, and it's probably one of the most dangerous places in the nether. <laughs> so, let's go over a couple things. Netherrack we've seen before. They spawn next to ruined portals. Now, ruined portals can spawn in the nether as well as the overworld. Uh, but netherrack is most of what the terrain is made out of in the nether. We also have this stuff here. This is called nether quartz. I'm actually going to take out my silk pickaxe here. And if you silk touch this, you can actually pick up the nether quartz or place it back down, etc. And if we break it with something that's not, not silk touch, like this fortune pick, we'll actually get nether quartz. Now the fortune pick is supposed to get you a little bit more than just one. There we go, we got five out of three nether quartz or blocks. And you can change this into blocks of quartz. You can use it in redstone uh, components. Jeepers, redstone components. <laughs> um, but yeah, nether quartz is super hard to get most of the time. Uh, you can see it kind of is pockmarked around the place. Um, yeah, this is kind of the only place you can get it. Now, netherrack is super soft. If you have an efficiency four or better diamond pick, you can actually instant mine it. Uh, so it's kind of good to get a, a, a bit of it. Um, 
couple of rules while you're in the nether. While you're digging, let's say you're digging a tunnel somewhere, never run while you dig because there are random pockets of one block lava in the nether um, that will kill you <laughs> if you just run into straight into it. Um, nice thing about quartz is it will actually get you a lot of experience. So what I used to do early game is I would just go into the nether and mine nether quartz. And that was before they put all the different uh, biomes in there. Now, some other things you can see here are nether gold ore. Now, this will drop gold nuggets, okay? But be very, very careful because those guys over there, those piglins, if they see you uh, break a piece of gold, whether it's gold that you've placed down, a gold block, whether it's gold that's here, um, they will aggro to you. They will get very upset. Also, that chest over there, if you open a chest near a piglin, um, they all the piglins in the area will get upset with you. Now, these gentlemen here are zombie piglins. They are these guys, but zombies. <laughs> they don't care about you at all. They really don't. Uh, unless you hit one of them. Do not hit one of them. If you do, every single zombie piglin in the area that can hear their zombie piglin screech will run after you and try to kill you. It is unbelievably difficult to run away from them once they are ticked off at you so just don't hit them don't hit them with stray arrows don't accidentally swipe them with anything don't don't tick off the zombie piglins <laughs> and the last thing in our field of view here are these gentlemen now these are piglin brutes they are uh, relatively new they guard nether bastions or piglin bastions ruined bastions um they guard mainly the treasure rooms i believe a certain amount of them spawn per bastion yes that is correct they spawn uh in bastions and only a set amount will spawn now unlike their piglin brethren uh piglin brutes don't care if you have nether or gold armor on they don't care at all they will still come and attack you they are mean they hit like a truck just stay away from them, plop a boat down if they're running at you, they'll get stuck in the boat, or just stay away from them, just completely ignore them. Uh, we are not fit to, to check out a bastion quite yet, so we're not going to go near that thing at the moment. Now, in the nether, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is use the scumpus system that we talked about earlier, okay? You're going to find a block that doesn't spawn normally in the nether, like cobblestone, and you're going to place it down, and you're going to place torches on where your home is, okay, as you're exploring. I see you over there. Get away from me. Um, so as I'm exploring this way, and I come across this area here, and I can no longer see my portal. Let me go over here. I can see this cobblestone that tells me, up oh, my portal's over there somewhere. So while I'm exploring and exploring, and I'll go around to a point where I can't see that cobblestone block anymore, right? I'm going to go ahead and place a scumpus here that says, hey, go that way. Oh, there is a ghast over here. Look at that. Now, a ghast is a floaty mob. It's going to fly around, and once it sees us, like so, it will shoot a fireball at us. The fireballs will explode. They'll hit us for a lot of damage. Um, and they will also catch us on fire. Now, if you just break line of sight, uh, the ghast will no longer be able to hit you with a fireball. You can deflect the fireballs if you're uh, good at timing these. Oh, and it just despawned. <laughs> so if you're good at timing these fireballs, or the, these hits, you can deflect the fireball back at the ghast or at something else. Uh, which is pretty neat. Wow, we've got a lot of biomes right here. So this here with all this uh, uh, dirt looking stuff, this is called soul sand, okay? And what this is, is it's actually, you can see like little faces on it. This is, in in my own head cannon. <laughs> this is sand that has souls trapped into it. And you can go ahead and pick that up. Um, and you'll see we get a new crafting recipe. Now soul sand, when you're actually walking on it, you go a lot slower than if you're walking on anything else, all right? The other type of soul sand stuff, as you can see here, is soul soil. All right, that one will not slow you down. Here, I'll show you a better difference between the two here. Um, the soul soil will not slow you down. You can pick that up. Um, but what soul sand and soul soil does is it allows you to make soul torches. And wouldn't you know it, I need coal for that as well. So a soul uh, torch is made in a, in a crafting table um, three by three crafting recipe. What it is, is a piece of soul sand at the bottom, a stick, and then a piece of coal up here at the top. And it gives you four soul torches. Now, soul torches are blue, 
and they only give off light level 7 as opposed to a regular torch, which gives off light level, I believe, 13. So they're not nearly as bright, but they have this nice blue effect on them here. Now, you remember how I said food is scarce in the nether, right? You can find mushrooms, uh, red and brown mushrooms. So if you find any of the nether wood, you can go ahead and make mushroom soup. Also, if you find hoglins, which we haven't seen any yet, thankfully, um, they do drop pork chops. Now here is something called a fossil. Now fossils will spawn very, very regularly in soul sand valleys, which is what we're in at the moment with all this soul sand all over the place. Um, what we can do is we can actually pick this up and turn this into nine pieces of bone meal. So these are really, really good to get uh, farms and trees growing. I would pick these up if you are in a safe spot in a soul sand valley. Now, another reason that I want to pick up some of this soul sand is because I want to use it for things called bubble elevators. Now, one of the best ways to get, um, instead of climbing up our ladder all the time to get in and out of our uh, farm, our mob farm, what we can do is place a piece of soul sand at the bottom of that instead of the ladder. We'll get rid of all the ladders and then put water source blocks all the way up to the top. I'll show you a cheap and easy way to do that. And then this will actually create bubbles that will launch us from the bottom all the way up to the top super duper duper quick. And our other thing here that I want to show off in the immediate vicinity is glowstone. Now glowstone, if you break it with a silk touch uh, pickaxe, it will drop the actual glowstone block itself. Now glowstone is, I believe, light level 14. If we go ahead and turn on our F3 screen, yep. It's light level 14. Um, it's a really great lighting block. You can hide it under a couple things to uh, to make mobs, you know, not spawn in that location because it's so bright. The other thing you can do is with a non-silk touch pickaxe, uh, and of course I didn't catch it. <laughs> there we go. We've got ourselves some glowstone dust. Now glowstone dust, you can use four of it to make glowstone. You can also use it in potion brewing and hopefully today we'll find another fortress where we can get some potion brewing ingredients going for us so another thing that i want to go over if you do find lava somewhere let's say you're running around in your nether and you're mining directly above you and you find a, a piece of lava that's up there lava in the overworld uh flows very very slowly Lava in the nether flows at the same rate, I believe, as water. So you need to be super, super careful if you're standing underneath any new lava flows because it will reach you in seconds. It, it's it's going to hurt. Now, this is going to be a bit risky, but something that I want to show you uh, as well. Don't ever mine underneath you in the nether because you have no idea if you're on a one block thick shelf like this one here now if we were standing here and a, a ghast was to spawn over there and shoot a fireball at us we would drop directly into lava very very dangerous to be standing on a one block thick uh, ledge like we are here uh just just be wary everywhere in the nether is dangerous absolutely everywhere just Pretend that you're always going to be killed all the time. Be that careful. Now, best way to deal with gas is to break line of sight, shoot them with a bow, or shoot their fireballs back at them like that. So it shot a fireball at me, and I shot the fireball back into its face, and we get an achievement, return to sender. Absolutely beautiful. Now, off in the distance over here, I see a warped forest. And, and this is... <laughs> absolutely fantastic i gotta be honest with you wow this bastion is this another one or is this the same one and it's just holy moly that's amazing um now warp forests are really great because they will spawn nothing but endermen which is fantastic for progression into the end because we need a lot of eyes of ender we need a lot of ender pearls uh with blaze rods um in order to get to the end Plus, you can see that that uh, different wood type is over there. Let's see if I can zoom in with the spyglass here. Yeah, that right there, that is warped stem. And this is, uh, I think it's called, I believe it's called warped wart blocks. It's kind of difficult. Warped wart. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> some of the names are hard. <laughs> I want to get over here to show you the trading mechanic of piglins, but I don't want to get too close to the piglin brutes because their wrath is horrendous and i also don't want to fall to my 
death over here because I hear a ghast around. And if it decided to shoot me while I was over there, it would be... It would be bad for Thrillash. Oh, another thing I forgot. Uh, piglins are afraid of zombie piglins. So if they see one near them, they will run away from them. Uh, can be a way to get piglins to stop chasing after you. Here we go. We've got somebody who is distracted at the moment. Hello, sir. So if I walk up to this guy and right click on him, he's going to look at that gold ingot there for a little bit and then toss something at us. And he gave us some leather. Look at that. And I can actually just throw this on the ground here and he'll run over to it as well and keep looking at it. I'm gonna trade with this guy for a little bit, see what we get. Now, that guy gave us a ton of loot, actually. We've got some crying obsidian, which is pretty cool. Uh, some spectral arrows, and what they do is, if you were to shoot an enemy or a mob or anything with a spectral arrow, it'll give it this, like, white outline on its uh, on its character model, and you can actually, like, see them through walls and stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, they gave us some nether bricks, which we can smelt netherrack into nether bricks in a furnace, or we can find them in um, nether fortress. And also a fire charge. Now, a fire charge is one of the ways that if your portal were to break, you can actually... Oh, that guy just went through. Okay, he also just went through our portal, <laughs> so we'll see them on the other side. Um... Now, fire charge is one of the ways, if your portal was to break, you can bring a fire charge over to it, right? I'm not going to, I can't actually break the block here, but you can just right click like a flint and steel and it will light a fire for you. So that's one of the ways to mend your portal if it were to break so you can get back home. Now, that was a lot to take in. I'm going to go ahead back home. We should see these piglins on the other side and they have turned into or they just went back through the portal, but uh, piglins will turn into zombie pigmen. Um, if they stay in the overworld for too long, okay? And every now and then, a zombie pigman will spawn from your nether portal, so... Oh, yeah, they, they both turned into zombie pigmen. Now, uh, this is a perfect place... Oh, yep, he went away. For me to show you, A, what a spectral arrow does, and B, the zombie piglin's getting mad at people, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this guy, and... Okay, it just killed him. <laughs> uh, but you saw the outline there for a little bit. Um, and zombie piglins will spawn, uh, spawn. They will drop. Hello. Goodness me, you scared me. There we go. Now they're both mad at me. So you see the spectral arrow piece, and you'll see that, uh, both of the pigmen are ticked off at the moment, right? So zombie pigmen, uh, piglins, excuse me, will drop rotten flesh like they normally do, uh, zombies normally do anyways. And they will also drop... They will also drop gold things, okay? So they'll drop gold nuggets. Some of them will drop gold ingots. They'll drop gold weapons and armor, etc., etc. So one of the best ways to get gold is to make zombie piglin farms, okay? And those, what we normally do to do those is we go to the top of the nether. Uh, we break a piece of bedrock, which uh, we haven't even seen yet in this series. Um, and then go way up on the top of the ne nether and... Uh, I just swipe our sword at a bunch of piglin, zombie piglins that get ticked off at us. Oh, and by the way, if you always want to be guaranteed to shoot a certain type of arrow, put it in your offhand, uh, because then you will shoot that arrow. Infinity doesn't work with things like spectral arrows or tipped arrows, which are arrows that have like potion effects on them. But if you have a certain tipped arrow or something that you know you want to shoot instead of any regular arrow, just put it in your offhand and you will always shoot that type of arrow. We're going to head back in and I have my stone cutter now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our portal a little bit safer than it is right now. Okay, I'm going to drop the stone cutter here and I'm going to make a ton of cobblestone slabs. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of just make the area around our portal into cobblestone slabs so that way nothing can spawn on it. Problem with zombie piglin is they can... Whoa! There's one of those random patches of lava that I was talking about. Uh, zombie piglins can spawn uh, pretty much at any light level. So we need to make sure that they just can't go wandering into our portal. Another thing is if we were to uh, walk into the nether and there was a ghast there waiting for us, uh, they could just turn around, shoot us, no warning whatsoever, and make our day horrible. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to mob proof a little area around our portal uh, just so when we walk in, we can kind of assess the situation, what's going on. We're going to use bottom half slabs in order to mob proof our area here. We're also going to give ourselves a little bit of a, like a work area, right? 
And we are going to mob proof this completely by throwing some cobblestone slabs on top of it. So now nothing can spawn on top of it either. Uh, we are, we just, we don't want anything ruining our day right when we go into or right when we're trying to come home from the nether. So welcome to our humble abode. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add a door here and it's not going to be a normal door. I'm going to add an iron door to this, okay? So iron doors are made exactly like normal doors uh, except with iron ingots. The problem with the iron doors, you can't right click on them to open them. So we need to make something a little bit different here. I'm going to use two spruce planks to make two spruce buttons. And I'm going to place this button here right next to this door. Now, I can place it here, I can place it here, I can place it here. I can probably place it on the floor. I'm not really sure. Uh, by the way, stairs, mobs can't spawn on stairs. So it's a really great way to uh, put a, a, a quote-unquote solid block that you're not going to like fall down into um, in order to uh, also mob proof at the same time. Um, and let's put a slab on top of that. There we go. Uh, so with this button here, what I can do is right-click on it. And the door will open. Isn't that fantastic? Now, what this does is it's actually sending uh, what's known as a redstone pulse into this block here, which powers the door, right? And the door will open and the door will shut. Minecraft mobs aren't smart enough to push buttons uh, because we didn't get the copper golem in, in the next edition, unfortunately. So you can go ahead and push the button and go in and out of this door. Your heart is content if you can make it through. And other things won't be able to go into there. Look at that. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is make a couple of iron bars. Now, we're going to make 16 of them here. I'm going to put some iron bars here. So we can see what's going on outside. And it kind of keeps our creepy uh, dungeon aesthetic here for our first little nether structure as we keep ourselves safe in and out of the nether, right? Now, I've brought a furnace in here. We don't really have any fuel for it at the moment either, but uh, I also have a chest. Uh, just kind of make yourself a little a little semi-mini base when you get to the nether, so that way you're kind of prepared for almost anything that happens. So we're going to store a couple of bits of food in here just in case. Um, we will also put our crying obsidian in here, and eventually we're going to put what's known as a respawn anchor in here too. Now, you can't set your spawn in the nether, okay? You can place beds down, right? Uh, this is super dangerous. You can place beds down, but do not right-click on them because it will explode. In a huge explosion, it will probably kill you. I'm not kidding. It's intentional game design. Um, so we don't, we don't want any beds in here, but what we can do is make what's known as a respawn anchor. Now we need six pieces of crying obsidian and three pieces of glowstone to make a respawn anchor. And what that will do is if we, uh, right click on it, it will set our nether spawn. And if we were to die in the nether, we would spawn back over here. A right. couple more things to note while I mine some cobblestone, because I used it all, unfortunately. I shift-clicked and I made stairs. Uh, I made an entire stack of them of cobblestone. I, I do it all the time. Uh, the grindstone and me aren't friends. Or, excuse me, the stone cutter. Um, something to note in the nether, time in the overworld is progressing. So often what will happen is you will come out of the nether and it will be nighttime. And that's kind of why I built a structure around the nether portal, right? So that way, if we were to just build it in the middle of the field, we came out of the nether, there would just be mobs all over the place. It would be disastrous, right? So you should really uh, kind of mob proof the area around your nether portal or build a structure around it. You can put a bed in there too, if you really feel like it. it's up to you. <clears throat> and one other thing about the nether that's absolutely really fantastic is it's kind of what's known as the underworld highway okay so every single block that you travel in the nether let's say you go from this block to this block in the nether that is eight blocks in the overworld right so the nether is kind of a weird dimension where you can actually get from one place to the other very quickly so how does that come in handy? Well, you don't just have to have one nether portal in your world. You can put them all over the, all over the place. So what I will end up doing uh, eventually, maybe not in this episode, although we might, uh, is putting a nether portal on the mob farm. So instead of going all the way over through all of that uh, frozen ocean, etc., etc., we can just pop into the nether over here, go through the nether, the however many blocks it is, divided by eight uh, to get over there. 
right? And uh, I'll show you the math for it. Is to, uh, yeah, let's do this today. Why not? As long as it's not through that bastion, we can give it a shot. Uh, no throw. This video is 30 minutes long already. We're not going to do this today. <laughs> we don't have time for this, unfortunately. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching this video. I really appreciate all of you so much. I really hope it was enlightening. Let me know your favorite part down in the comments below. And what would you... I got to stop swinging this axe around. Yeah, that guy's standing right in front of me. I could have just died. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite part? What else would you like to know about the nether? Um, and I think maybe in the next episode, we... Uh, yeah, definitely. The next episode, we are going to link... Uh, the portals between here, uh, which is our base, and the mob grinder, which is over out in the middle of the ocean. So we don't have to walk uh, as many blocks between the two. Uh, we will also probably go look at all the different biomes because I have seen all of them in the area just doing some exploring. So not a big deal. We will go check those out as well. But in the meantime, folks, thank you so much for being here. Leave a like if you really like this video. Subscribe to, uh, to keep up to date with our random shenanigans. Um, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. And we will see you all in the next episode. Thank you, everybody, again. Goodbye.